Okay. So with that, I'm going to let Zach kind of give you a little instruction on uh, living shorelines, the benefits of living shorelines, um, costs kind of a thing. So as a restoration practitioner or as you apply what you're learning now later in life, um, you'll have a better idea of how we come up with these things. So Zach, he is the Habitat Restoration uh, Coordinator mm -hmm. uh, out of Sandy Hook, works for me. And uh, take it away, man. Yeah, thank you. Um... Yeah, so as Al said, I'm going to be talking about living shorelines. So has anyone heard of this term before, before today? Just wondering. No? So um, what I want to do is I'll talk a little about the history. We'll talk about what a living shoreline is. As kind of been alluded to already, what you have here is an example of a living shoreline. And what Al is going to say is uh, this is one of the only examples of a hybrid living shoreline that you're going to see in New Jersey right now. We'll talk a little bit about what that is. So to start, uh, I want to give a little bit of history. Like I'll talk about the history of the ecology. I want to talk about the history of living shorelines as a concept. Right? So the modern concept of the, what has developed into what we refer to as living shorelines started in the 70s. So there's a guy named Edgar Garbish Jr. I think he was a chemist. Um, but his family home was in Maryland along the Chesapeake Bay. And he went away for a while. He came back uh, to his family home and he noticed that all the marshes along uh, the water where he had grown up had all eroded away. And he wanted to do something to try and rebuild them. So he built what we call now a marsh sill. So if you guys actually come, I don't know if you can see, uh, we have a, an example right there. It's essentially, and you'll see it when we move forward. It's essentially a low stone breakwater, right? And he built it offshore. And then he did some planting, and through time he found that his marsh began to regrow, right? So uh, from that, he built off that success and he started doing it in other places. And then it, that concept expanded into what we have nowadays, which is a, a more broad concept that includes a whole bunch of other techniques besides just a marsh sill. So we can have stuff that ranges from using uh, the coconut fiber logs, they're called core logs, and regrading, which is a more softer natural approach, right? So you regrade your shoreline, put some of those logs in, do some planting, all the way up to more hard structures like this concrete matting uh, that you see here today, right? So that's kind of how the concept developed. And essentially there's a lot of different definitions that you'll find for it, but essentially what a living shoreline is, it is an erosion control technique or a range of techniques that Stabilize your shoreline while also creating or enhancing habitat. Right? And that habitat's an important part of this because it's what separates a living shoreline technique from uh, more traditional hard structures like a bulkhead that you might see across uh, the inlet right here. And we're doing this, we're trying to create habitat for a number of reasons. Right? The nature lover in me wants to create habitat because I just find of value in creating habitat for plants and animals and I think that's great and some people have that and they put that value on it as well but by kind of mimicking nature uh, we're also able to take advantage of the ecosystem services that our natural ecosystem provides right so if we're talking about rebuilding a marsh those marshes have a number of functions that also help us here if we're talking about uh, resiliency or trying to protect our upland infrastructure right they act as sponges so as flood waters coming in. They're going to help kind of mitigate some of that flooding. On the reverse, Captain Al talked about stormwater runoff. Um, as that water is running off before reaching our Shark River, it's running through those marshes and it's going to, those plants are going to uh, soak up some of the nutrients that otherwise would flow directly in there. Right? So there's benefits that you'll see with water quality. Um, in terms of, we say we these softer structures and your natural marshes are able to address um, wave energy and stormwater energy differently than a hard structure, right? So if you have a storm, if you have waves that are coming and they're going to hit up against the bulkhead, all that wave energy, it hits that hard structure and then it gets reflected back down into in front of it. So what you'll see is if you build a, a seawall or something like that, oftentimes you are going to lose all the habitat that's in front of it, right? So here's your wall, here's like a beach. Those waves are coming in, they're hitting that wall, all that energy gets pushed down and it scours out and it, and it removes all that habitat. By 
Um, as opposed to that, if you do something more natural, like mimicking a, a natural beach landscape, mimicking uh, a marsh, instead of having that wave energy hit that structure and, and go down, it gets absorbed and dissipated in a better way. So you don't have that scouring and that loss of habitat that you will see with more traditional hard structures, right? Um, so like I said, we have, we are having the ecosystem services that these living shorelines provide. They're creating habitat. And with that habitat, again, you know, there, there's some value besides just having it nice that there are plants and animals in an area, right? They provide value in other ways as well. Um, and then there is some evidence that is coming out now. See, these are more recent techniques, so people are studying them. And there's some evidence that they, they provide uh, resiliency as good or better than hard structures. There's a study that came out, uh, I think in 2011 in North Carolina, where after a, a hurricane hit, they went and they went out and they surveyed shorelines that had bulkheads and hard structures and shorelines that were more natural. And the ones that were more natural fared much better than your bulkheaded and your hard structures, right? There's a lot of damage that occurred there for your natural ones. It just dissipated all that energy and you didn't see as much damage. So, uh, those are some of the benefits. Um, the reasons why, why are these so important now? And kind of Al alluded to it a little bit when we talked about how our, uh, our streams, our rivers, our inlets are changing and our shorelines are changing, right? So we have increased development that is altering the morphology of our streams. We have climate change and sea level rise that is altering our water levels. And essentially what's happening is that along your coastal communities, your coastal areas, we are seeing increased erosion as that water level is rising for various reasons, right? So we need to have some sort of way to address that, right? You can have your, the, uh, you know, maybe sometimes the best approach is to just retreat from that, right? So let that natural process occur because erosion is a natural process. But if you get to areas like this where you have built up infrastructure already, you know, I think if you told these people, hey, this is eroding, just move, uh, <laughs> I don't think they're going to be very happy. Uh, so you need other ways to address that problem, right? Like I said, traditionally, we could have had those hard structures and, and armor all of it, but then you get those losses of habitat and that other stuff. So these living shorelines are other techniques that are allowing us to address these issues going forward and do it in a way that uh, is more beneficial to the environment and I think to the community as well. So that's a little overview of living shorelines. And as I said, there's a whole host of different techniques. It's really expanded from that initial marsh sill idea. So as we're gonna see today, and I'll talk a little bit more about the specifics of this one, they range anywhere from something like this, which is a more hybrid structure where we're including the aspects of hard structure, but what we're doing it in a way that's a little more natural as opposed to just building a wall to something that would be more simple where we just regraded the marsh and did some plantings to oyster reefs, which we're building in Barnegat Bay and other areas like that. So all kind of examples of uh, different techniques that are helping us to protect our shoreline while creating habitat and getting those other benefits. So that's a general, anybody have any questions on the general overview of any of that? No? Um, yeah, so with that, that's kind of an overview. If you want to take it over and talk about the specifics of, sure. of this site. Let's get you guys off the grass. Come on.